Hey guys, Brian here. Today I'm going to give you a dyno proven recipe for a 400 horsepower V powered first gen. So, this is based off of any intercooled first generation Cummins diesel truck that, uh, if it's all stock or you got all the original stock parts, this is the things that. I would recommend that you change that will get you a proven 400 horsepower and over a thousand foot pounds of torque. So that'll get you on par with pretty much any of the new trucks that you buy today that are stock or the way they come from the dealer. Of course, the modern technology of common rail, they can go way above whatever they come from from the factory. But again, at 400 horsepower, we're way above what this thing came from the factory because uh, this would have been 160 horse and 400 foot pounds when it was new and that's at the engine and I'm talking 400 to the tires so this truck is a five speed uh, if you have a automatic in stock form at this power level you're going to blow through it pretty good so you'll need to do something about a converter and probably a transmission build the get rag can handle that much horsepower as long as you keep fluid in it uh, clutch, depending on how many miles you have on it, will be borderline at that point. A thousand foot pounds is a lot for the single disc to hold. If you plan a trailer a lot at that kind of power level, I would recommend a dual disc, which is what I have in this, or a uh, real good single will also suffice at that level, but there's some compromises to that. But anyway, you're probably here to find out how to get 400 horsepower for less than $4,000. and. Uh, I'm going to provide that for you here now, so let's take a look. So on my truck you'll see some extraneous stuff with these sensors on here. Uh, you don't need any of that. That's just simply for my testing and tuning and verification of what components do and how they perform. Uh, if you have one of these trucks and it's stock uh, the first upgrades that I would recommend doing would be to the exhaust system this truck has a four inch uh, exhaust with a muffler on it and it is a full four inch all the way to the turbocharger uh, you'll need that uh, this truck has a stock air filter so you don't need to upgrade that unless you just want to. It's really not that restrictive. I found with the monitoring stuff on here, it loses about a pound at 400 horsepower or one PSI. So it could be better, but it could be a lot worse. Uh, the advantage to the stock one is it's in the air housing. It's protected from the elements and you've already got it. So it doesn't cost you anything. So as long as your air filter's not dirty, 400, Easy enough to do, all stock. Uh, same goes intercooler. Uh, you can get a different intercooler and make this better than what it is, but you don't have to do that. The stock intercooler uh, will perform just fine at this power level. So back to the exhaust, I would recommend getting a three-piece manifold. Uh, the stock manifold will shrink enough to break the ears off the cylinder head if you do not replace it. So you definitely want to replace that. It gets you a little bit of performance gain, but mainly it's just so you don't destroy your head. You can buy a lot more expensive manifold like a Steed Speed or something and probably get a performance gain out of it. I don't know. I haven't tested that. Uh, this manifold that's on this truck came off of my race truck. It's... Uh, probably getting close to it's 25 years old I'd say still performs great does the job so why mess with success the next one here which is going to be controversial probably but it's uh, my choice I think it's a good recommendation for an upgrade this is a S300G turbocharger part number 174 430 and in its stock configuration it comes with an 80 or a 0.08 uh, 
OAR exhaust housing. That is what was on it when I made the 430 horse and 1,025 foot-pounds of torque. So the current housing I have on it is an 070. That moves the RPM range down about 250 RPMs where it spools. Uh, in order to keep the EGTs the same as the 80, the wastegate ports have been uh, opened up on this and I changed it to a spring gate. You don't have to do any of that unless you want to get that extra foot pounds of torque and the better throttle response out of it. Uh, as the turbocharger comes, it is fully capable of making the 400 horsepower and over a thousand foot pounds of torque. Just an option should you choose to improve upon it, just like the manifold deal. You can get a Chinese knockoff manifold, three piece manifold and put on here and do exactly the same. Uh, the number one deal with first gen engines for horsepower is fuel injectors. Uh, for something in the 400 horse range, I would highly recommend the power driven diesel power jet stage two injectors. Uh, it's a super clean injector. Uh, I would say realistically it, it smokes less than the six hole nine thousandths intercooled tips that were in this when it was turned up all the way. And the fuel pump is turned up all the way in order to make this horsepower level. It's right below runaway. Other than that, the pump is entirely stock. There are no aftermarket parts in the pump. Uh, if you go to my AFC Tuning Secrets video, you can see how the AFC is tuned and the stock fuel pin is modified to make this horsepower level. But other than that, it's all stock. Got stock air horn, stock intercooler, stock cam, stock head. Uh, the engine will most likely need to be studded. Now, as far as what kind of studs you need to hold the head down at that level, uh, I was using A1, uh, real old set of studs that were off the race truck. And at that power level, they held just fine with a stock gasket. Uh, if you go much beyond that, more than likely you're gonna blow the gasket. Uh, so that's really a pretty good power level to be at for one of these trucks. Almost, if you try and go up in the 500 horse range, you're more likely going to need a lot more modifications and a lot more expense to get that power level. But 400 is a cakewalk. It's easy to do with the right parts. Key being the right parts. Uh, if you get like a 62 uh, SXE turbocharger and put on here, uh, it definitely can make the horsepower. At peak RPMs, it'll run a little bit cooler, but everything below 2,000 RPM is basically gonna be dead. Uh, it'll be super soft, won't have hardly any power below that. Uh, so if you like to keep it revved up all the time and run around like a race truck, then that could be a way to go. But if you like the truck to drive really good and drive like a new stock truck where it'll pull away from a light and be responsive, then this 300G is gonna be the much better option. So as a recap of the minimum things that I would recommend in order to get the 400 horsepower level is you will need head studs, the power driven diesel stage two injectors, and an exhaust manifold that will allow for expansion and contraction not break the head the proper turbocharger and a four inch exhaust to keep it cool. And that's really all you need. Everything else here is stock. I will say, the, depending on what kind of shape your fuel transfer pump is in, uh, you may want to upgrade that. Uh, some people go with a high volume, low pressure lift pump. I chose to go with a uh, competition 12 valve pump and to install a fuel regulator to reduce my fuel pressure to the proper level. And it's more complicated that way but I believe the pump performs better. I have no problem at all maintaining fuel pressure with this setup. Uh, I can maintain fuel pressure at any level I really want to.
for that matter. I run a fleet guard uh, fuel filter on here with uh, no fuel bowl and it's a little taller than normal. So I have an FS1221 fuel filter on there. It uh, doesn't leak and it handles the additional fuel pressure, no issues. But again, that is not required for this power level. It's just something that you can do that will make it better. I so said pump is all stock, except for the fuel screw being run all the way in and the AFC set as per my other video. Timing is stock with it pushed all the way to the head. Uh, you can skip a tooth and pull it back away, but that's getting marginal for where you really want to run that setup with those injectors. Anything more than that, and it's, it's going to start to get pretty rattly, and you will lose uh, torque that you have when you engage the clutch at low RPMs. I like to be able to just let the clutch out with the trailer behind it and it just take off and go just like it does when it's stock. If you advance the timing a whole lot, it will no longer be able to do that. You'll have to give it fuel for it to pull away. So I try not to get too crazy on timing and just to the head, the way it comes from the factory is enough to get over 400 horse. So as you can see, it really doesn't take much to get to that power level of being equivalent to a new truck or maybe even a little more. Of course, these trucks don't weigh near as much as, as uh, a new truck does, so 400 horse in one of these feels pretty good. Uh, they're pretty quick, even though it, it doesn't sound like a lot. You take 2,000 pounds off this versus a F-350 crew cab of equivalent spec, uh, that adds up and how it drives. Also, you know, you can get this dually gets around 19 miles a gallon legitimate, and uh, that's mileage verified GPS, tanked after tank after tank, not just some spec number. So it is possible if you can keep your foot out of it and not drive crazy. Aerodynamics are not the best, so if you keep the speed down, hell, that's based on running 70 miles an hour because I don't want to keep the speed down. That's why I got more power than it's supposed to have. If you have any questions about any of this, you can certainly ask and I'll try to answer them, but uh, that's a pretty basic, simple recipe that if you follow it, you should have. Uh, if everything on your engine is in good shape and not wore out or something messed up, you should be able to just put, bolt those parts on, adjust the pump timing and the, the fuel delivery, which are plenty of videos on that. I've got videos myself on how to do it and have over 400 horse to the tires and a thousand foot pounds of torque so oh and as for reliability uh, this setup has over 30,000 miles on it no issues so if you drive like you got some sense you should be able to get good life out of it if you just take it out in neutral drop it in third gear with a slam to the moon probably not you probably have a broke transmission or something else tore up but if you just drive it sensibly and use the power on hills and boy, not uh, not smoking the world down, should get good life out of this and not have any issues. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch you later.